Hello and welcome to my triggers tutorial. This tutorial is designed to teach you how to use triggers or give you an introduction to using triggers with the web live editor. Specifically, we'll be using the animation trigger and the look and use trigger. So open up your project. For this tutorial, I've created a pre-made map which has a subtracted space, a start location, a light, and a mesh and animations already imported into it. So here are my animations. And here's my mesh. And so this is what we'll be animating using triggers. And okay, the first step is to go to the actor classes browser and find under the actor class, there's the pawn class, expand it to find the basic pawn subclass, which is a default class made with the web live editor. So have it selected, right click a place in the map and select add basic pawn here. Double click it to open up the properties window. And what we'll wanna do is attach a mesh to it and so we'll attach the one that I've already imported. So expand the display tab, find the mesh property, and select use. Because we already have it selected over here in the animations browser, selecting use will by default pick the mesh that is currently selected. Next we want to open up the events tab and give our pawn a tag. This tag is referenced by triggers so that they know which mesh they're talking to. And this is a, a child mesh, so we'll call the basic pawn child. The next step is to place a trigger. So under the actor class browser, we'll go to the triggers, expand it, and select the animation trigger subclass. And with that selected, right click somewhere in the map and select add animation trigger here double click to open the properties and under advanced there's a B hidden property and we want to set that to false. This means that whenever we test the map we can actually see the triggers physical sprite here. This doesn't want to be done when a map is being deployed but for testing purposes it's useful. Next open up the events tab and we can give this trigger a unique name that we make for ourselves and so we can call it animate child and to tell this animation trigger to reference our basic pawn in the event property right here we'll type child which is the tag of the basic pawn now this animate trigger whenever it's called it'll look to any pawn with the tag child which would be this one and call an animation on it. Next, we want to place another trigger, which is a look and use trigger. So have that selected from the actor class browser. Right click a location in the map and select add look and use trigger here. Double click to open the properties. We'll once again set the be hidden field to false so that we can see it in the map. This is useful so we know where we're clicking. By default, it's invisible because it's assumed that you would have the trigger placed on top of something like a button so that the user would feel like they're clicking on a button or something created in the map, but this is just a box. Next, open up the events tab and we want to give this a unique name or a unique tag and we can call it, well we can just leave it default since nothing will be referencing it, but in the events field we want to type in the tag of the animation trigger which was the previous one we placed which was called animate child and in the trigger action field this is where we want to type the name of an animation and so these are all the animations attached to the mesh we're using. So we can use bow. And now this trigger when clicked on will look for the animate child event and pass the bow animation to it. 
the animate child is this animation trigger, which will then take bow and pass it to the child event, which is this basic pod. Now when we run the map, we will be able to click on the trigger and animate the child. <coughs> So there are the triggers we placed, that's the animate trigger, here's the look and use, and clicking on it will make the child bow. A common problem run into when trying to do this is that whatever animation you pass to the animation trigger will be told that it's not found. That's because whenever you import a mesh in the web live editor, by default, the field found under the Animation Browser's Mesh tab in the Animation pull-down menu, this default animation property is by default when you import a mesh set to none. If it's set to none and you run the map, it won't be able to find any animations attached to it. You have to have this property. You have to type in animations into there and have any animations you import as part of the animations animation set. So that's a naming convention that is unique to the Web Live Editor and has to be followed. Now the other thing you can do with triggers is what we have here that we've created in this tutorial is a simple one-to-one -one relationship string. But we can also do one-to-many and many-to-one relationships where, for example, we could have several look and use triggers which call different animations on the mesh and whichever one you press will cause a different animation to occur. So we'll try doing that right now by selecting the look and use trigger from the actor class browser, right-clicking a spot in the map and placing it. So within its properties, first we'll make it visible and then we'll tell it to look at the animation trigger and we'll pass the run animation. Save the map and run it. And now depending on which look and use trigger we click on, a different animation will be played on the mesh which we have placed. So this one is for run, and we see when we click on it the mesh runs, and this one will trigger bowing. So that's creating a many-to-one relationship by having multiple triggers look at the same event by putting the same property into its event tag or its event property. Um, but we can also have one-to-many relationships where you'd want a single animation trigger to call perhaps several basic pawns. So we can test that now by placing another basic pawn. So in the actor class browser, open up pawn, select basic pawn, and place one in the map. Double-click it and attach our mesh to it. and give it the same tag as the previous pawn we placed. Now when we run the map, we can click on the look and use triggers and they will trigger multiple basic pawns to perform an animation. So here's the running and the bowing. You could attach different meshes to each basic pawn as long as each one still has an animation that has that matches the name of whatever animation was passed along from the trigger action property. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for listening.